Today on TGL Monday, we're talking about healing. And are those miracles real? Hello and welcome again to TGI Monday. This week we've got a question uh, from Steve, who sent this in via our website. Steve asks, is healing real? And if so, why does the outcome appear to be so random? That is, why will an atheist be healed, but a Christian not? Great question. Thanks, Steve. Um, so is healing real? What do we think? Dan, what do you think? I think healing is real. I would want to make maybe... Well, you know, I had a, a nun once give a very wise comment. She said to me that there's a difference between healing and cure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important yeah. to remember that. that. Certainly when I been through tough times, I know others, others too, they find a great sense of healing within the Christian community because the Christian community is set up to, to heal us in, in lots of ways, but not necessarily to come out the end fully cured. I still wear glasses, for example, and I'm not looking for the, the, the preacher to come and pray for me and get rid of my short-sightedness. Um, I don't not believe that, um, that God heals today, and I've never met a church that believes that God doesn't heal today, and I've met lots of people who've said they've had real, proper, supernatural type healings. Mm -hmm. But even, the, even the, kind of the, the most important people who speak on these topics say that they don't know why. There's, it seems to be so arbitrary, why some people get healed and some people right. don't. But for me personally, it's about, I find a healing community is much more important than a curing community. We don't just walk up to the hospitals and cure everybody. Um, <laughs> nor did Jesus. No, and nor did Jesus. But, but actually, our final cure comes at the end. Right. So there will be a time when I'm resurrected, and then I'll be perfect. Mm. That's the time I'm so that, for. So that's a point that I wanted to make, actually. Jesus, when he was alive, obviously he did heal lots and lots of people, but he was very clear that that wasn't the main reason he'd come. So there's a bit, um, this is from Mark uh, chapter one. He, uh, the whole town gathered at the door, Jesus healed many who had various diseases. Um, but then a couple of verses later, he says to the disciples, let us go somewhere else so that I can preach there because that is why I've come. And so it seems for Jesus, even then, you know, although healing was a big part of his ministry, it wasn't the only thing he wanted to do, and it wasn't always the most important thing he wanted to do. Zoe, what did you want to say? Well, that, I was just thinking about this with some of the healing miracles, mm. um, and that Jesus associates with uh, your sins are forgiven. And on first reading, you could think, oh my gosh, uh, this man of sins is doing that. And that theology is you, you're ill because you're bad. But actually, Jesus was coming to say the opposite of that. Mm. You know, people were in a very uh, superstitious culture of um, fear of the afterlife and retribution and had, you know, in the scales of have I done enough good to get me across the line? Um, I guess, mm. you know, life was, life expectancy was so much shorter, wasn't it? But when Jesus was saying to people, your sins are forgiven, oh, and you can have a, a healed body in this context, he was inviting people to have a much bigger sense of healing because in reality, we are all much, much more than our bodies. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a real temptation in some churches to almost emperor's new clothes about healing. Mm -hmm. um, I was first part of a, a church, a big, one of the mega churches that that is uh, sort of likely to appear on the God Channel. And, um, I went there once. Mm, it's a bit weird, wasn't it? It's a particular one, yeah. And um, I was unwell consistently. And um, I was made to feel that that was really just because I, did, I wasn't faithful enough. Yeah. And, and, and particular passages from the Bible were, missed, were taken out of context and, and prayed over you. And I really, as a, as a disabled person who feels more whole and healed than mm. ever before, actually... I really want to start speaking up about how abusive that can be. And, some, and, there are, and there are people out there who will exploit healing ministries for, for financial gain. Of aren't course. There? And they'll yeah. say things like, you haven't been healed because you haven't got enough faith. Mm. And things like... And, oh, it's and dreadful. It is and terrible. Yeah, but but the thing is with that, though, is that that's why in, say, in the Catholic Church they have uh, scientific advisors that actually investigate and authenticate all the different curings. They call them curings. Like, so in Lourdes... Millions and millions and millions of people have been to Lourdes, right? But there's only a very small proportion of them actually been cured. Mm. People will go to Lourdes and say they've had a healing experience, but what we're talking about there in that context is, is a cure. Mm. 
Yeah. And that's why it's important to apply a bit of mm. critical thinking to it and not mm. be carried on with the, the kind of flim-flam men. And I think that, uh, well, that's what they are, isn't it? And there's mm. flim-flam men in all different communities, not just uh, Christians and faith communities. There's mm. plenty of them about all over the place. One thing that struck me when I thought about this question was a, a scene from Life of Brian where... Uh, Ma Michael Palin goes, arms for an ex-leper, arms for an ex-leper. <laughs> and I think that's important because the thing is with it, if you, read, if you read the Bible properly and you read it carefully, you find that a lot of the, the cures and the healing miracles are actually not in response to anybody asking anyway. Mm -hmm. Jesus just does it. And I think the other thing that strikes me and all is from the film Bruce Almighty, isn't it? Where everyone's <laughs> praying to him, isn't it? And he can't be bothered to, to think yeah. about it. So he just says yes to everybody, doesn't he? <laughs> and then chaos ensues, isn't it? Yeah. So I think the thing is with it is that because we live in an ordered universe, we can't actually uh, be cured all the time because that's what we want. And mm -hmm. the other thing is as well is the question is who's actually in charge? Yes. It's that thing that people say to me sometimes, oh, we'll say a prayer, what's the lottery numbers on Saturday? Mm -hmm. And things like that. And I think that is a willful misunderstanding of the Christian faith, mm -hmm. because we are not in charge, God's in charge. Yes, absolutely. So I just wonder if that helps us with the last part of Steve's question. Why does the outcome appear to be so random? Why are some people healed and some people not? And it's partly, isn't it, that reminder that God is in charge and not us. We don't get to decide how and when he performs miracles. Um, but is it also, I think, I mean, in the Gospels, it seems to be often that Jesus heals somebody to make a particular point. It's a social yeah. point, usually, it's isn't a, it? A social point or a theological point mm. or uh, something that's going on. And I wonder if that's also true today, that when God heals somebody, he'll use it to, to show something in particular. Or when he doesn't heal somebody. So I'm thinking of somebody like um, Johnny, Johnny Erickson Tyler, who had that dreadful diving accident and was yeah, left yeah. paralysed, but actually has been able to use that yeah. to, to talk about God's grace and God's love in a different sort of way. But then he has been healed, hasn't he? That's she, the question. She, she, sorry. Johnny sorry Erickson, right. yeah. and, but that's, and that's, well, that's the point. The point and a, lot, a lot of people, and I've certainly found this, yeah. when, when I've gone through more difficult times in my life, that actually I'm, I find I'm not as in control, and that leads me to giving more control yeah. over to God, which is part of our spiritual journey to everyone. Also, when we risk falling into a narrow interpretation about what God's healing looks yes. like in terms of how that is meted out. So the idea that some uh, atheists are not cured, well, I, I think there's a lot to be said for the fact that God works... Um, through all healing, so mm -hmm. the hospitals we attend, of course, um, mm -hmm. the gifts, the many sorts mm -hmm. of gifts that the, that people yeah. have, of all faiths and none. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot to be said yeah. that yeah, that yeah, is yeah, God yeah. at work. That is God's uh, God's healing and God and God in our midst in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. But that having super well bodies is not the objective. Mm -hmm. Being whole and not dragging around mm -hmm. things that are unhelpful and keep us trapped in things yeah. which bind us is, is something that we really, really need freeing from and Great. something that we do get. Well, Great. I went out last night with Chris Williams down the pub. Yes. Do you reckon I could have some healing this morning? <sighs> no. Know. No. <laughs> I think God might be wanting to teach you that there are consequences of your actions, Hal. Um, so, great question, Steve. I think we're, we're all in agreement that we do believe in a God uh, who is capable of all kinds of miracles, uh, including healing, um, but actually that that's not what we're all promised and that there are good reasons for that sometimes, mm. at least not in this life. Please do keep on sending in your questions. Uh, we love to hear them all, even if we can't always answer them on the show. Thanks for watching. <laughs> get all your theology from, from the big screen. A lot of it, I do. Or down the pub. There's a lot of theology down the pub. So next time on TGI Monday, we're talking about the relationship between critical thinking and faith. Don't forget as well to subscribe to us on uh, YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter.